how good is an EV in cold conditions? Well, Robert has sent me to the extremes. This is Sweden. This is the middle of winter. I'm Andy Torbett, and this is Fully Charged. So this is my first time driving a Tesla and it's a bit of a baptism of fire or snow and ice in this case uh, because I've come to northern Sweden to drive it on a frozen lake in the middle of winter because we want to find out just how well an EV performs in these kind of conditions. And as was said to me this morning by the VP of Tesla Europe who's Swiss and knows a thing or two about driving in winter conditions up in the mountains, a car that's safe in winter is going to be safe all year round. So to test the car today, we've uh, set up a slalom course on the frozen lake. And then there's a box at the end to try and break in, just to test the, the precision braking, both of the car and me. And then some, uh, we've got an, a racetrack set up. So I'm gonna try and throw this car around. I'm actually gonna try and spin it out. Now, normally I'd be doing that with a bit of control, using the gears, using the handbrake, but I've got no gears and I've got no handbrake. So I wanna find out just how well this car performs in real winter conditions. Okay, so we're starting the slalom. It's fairly gentle. And actually, I'm not even, the speed we're doing at the moment, I'm not having to brake. I can just take the foot off the accelerator and there's enough brake in there to get us around the course. In fact, I could probably do this a bit faster, but it's all quite controlled at the moment. And I think it, the car feels like it's gripping into the ice. The battery pack is heavy and it sits low down in the car and it's distributed throughout the whole length. That means the balance and the center of gravity of the car is much lower, making it much more stable. And it's much, much harder to roll an EV car. Unlike a combustion engine car, we've got that big heavy weight of the engine all up front and actually relatively high off the ground there's not been even a hint of a slip or a slide so far. First go, pretty good, pretty good. There's a bit, actually, there's a bit of confidence that comes with being able to feel the tires gripping in and adjusting as you drive. For full disclosure, we've not just got winter tyres on, we've got winter studded tyres on, but they are road legal and the sort of things that everyone in this part of the world will use uh, on the roads um, all winter. Right, let's go a little bit faster. Okay, we're off. Ooh, hello. We're getting sliding now. Yeah, oh, that's it. Maybe you can feel the controls checking in and actually correcting the mistakes that I'm making. Oh, I'm not using the brakes at all here. I'm just a decent a little bit. 
yeah, there we go. Back in a little bit there. Whoa, hello. Slightly overcooked that one. Accelerate to get the grip back in the front and the tyres, the rear tyres, and then just, right, I've not touched the brake once. The car's actually braking for me just probably the right amount. And then hit the box and see if I can land this. Nope, nowhere close, but that was good fun. <laughs> But you know, I'm trying to throw this car in, I'm trying to make it skid, I'm trying to slide over the place. And actually, the car is keeping me incredibly stable and incredibly fixed in place. And to be honest, that's mostly the car that is to do with my driving skills. It's a bit like uh, that scene in Living Daylights with Timothy Dalton on the ice. Except I've not got a garden shed on my car. And if you don't get the reference, then you need to watch more James Bond films, frankly. Well, that was a bit more controlled that time. Actually did a half decent job. Didn't hit any poles, which is always nice. And now let's see if we can get this in the box. There we go. Boom, in the box. Beautiful, beautiful. So we're moving off the frozen lake now to a bit more of a realistic test for me because most of us don't drive on frozen lakes day in, day out. Um, so we're going to go on some of the, the roads on here. There's still winter roads, there'll still be snow cover, there'll be patches of ice, but it's the sort of thing that people commute on every day. So a bit more of a realistic test to see how this vehicle performs. Now one of the concerns that EV drivers have and potential EV drivers have is how much winter condi conditions will affect the range of an EV car. And it's a fair one because yes, you will have a drop in range, there's no doubt about it. But to be fair, you'll also have a drop in range from a combustion engine car um, because they're both chemical reactions that are affected by the cold we weather. With an EV car, yes, that, that chemical reaction that happens in the battery that's giving you the power that's affected by the cold, the drop in range is going to be more than it would be with a combustion engine car. But there's some things that happen in winter that apply to all vehicles. The air gets denser when it gets cold, so it just takes more power to push through it. You know, the slush and snow on the, on the, on the road, uh, the wheels got to push that aside, that requires more energy, so that's going to make the, the vehicle less efficient. And that applies to, say, any vehicle, regardless of how you are powering that vehicle forward. So I just went to indicate there and Jingle Bells comes on, which apparently is a thing in winter mode. I'm not sure why, it seems to be solving a problem that didn't really exist, but there we go, it was a nice feature, not one I'm particularly mad on. Now there are a number of simple things you can do to try and minimise how much your range is reduced in winter time. But even I've learnt just in the last 24 hours being out here in Sweden talking to people who use them day in, day out in these conditions. One is to keep the vehicle plugged in the whole time and, you know, until you need to use it. Um, to warm 
the car up before you leave using the mains power while it's still plugged in, not the power from the battery. If you need to use the blowers to clear the windscreen, do that and then turn them back off because they use a lot of energy. The other thing is, you know, try and heat yourself without using the battery power. So wear a hat and a jacket. If you are going to use the car to heat yourself, use the seat or the steering wheel heaters rather than, you know, blowing hot air because that does use a lot more energy. As well as that, driving efficiently, you know, not stop, start, stop, start at a high speeds again is going to help as it does at any time of year, but even more so during winter times. Another simple thing you can do, and you should do it regardless of the type of vehicle you've got, is if you come out in the morning and it's like a foot of snow on your bonnet and on your roof, clear it off before you start. Because not only does it make the car less aerodynamic, which is reducing efficiency and re reducing range, but also it's heavy, it's a lot of extra weight. If you load your car up with weight, I'm loving that indicator, I'm, I'm not. Um, if you're loading your car up with a load of extra weight, you're going to use more fuel, or in EV's case, more uh, battery power. So clear all that snow and ice off your car before you start. Okay, we've turned off now onto a real little Swedish country lane. Um, completely covered in snow, in fact, I would guess it's at least sort of three inches deep in snow um, and patches of ice. And again, you start to feel a little bit nervous driving in these conditions, but that's kind of the point of these sort of uh, these opportunities to drive in the most extreme conditions that you can get uh, from a winter point of view, i.e., driving a snow covered frozen lake in, uh, in northern Sweden. But having driven on that, having done the slalom course, having done the acceleration brake test, I now understand how the car works and really have, have, have a great deal of confidence in the car. It knows what it's doing. Um, it's stability from that low uh, centre of gravity and it's control over all four wheels and to respond to the changing conditions. Um, it's actually pretty impressive. So these cars also have a mode you can you can flick on, which is uh, bit the anti-slip. So if you find yourself with the wheels buried in snow, that's the indicator, uh, or or sand or soft mud or something like that, and your wheel spinning, you can put that on, and it helps to to get you out. Or if you find yourself in, in those sort of conditions where you suspect if you try and just drive off, you'll start digging into the, uh, the sand or the snow or the, or the mud, you can put that on to stop that happening in the first place. I came here wondering if an EV car like this was actually a suitable vehicle for driving in winter conditions. As far as safety and as far as handling goes, what I have discovered today is that this is a great piece of kit for driving for controlling your vehicle and being safe in winter conditions. So we're back in the Model 3 for the hot lap. They've set up a massive ice track that goes all around the lake. And this time the ground is, it's not snow covered ice or snow, it's pure ice. So we'll now see just how well the car and me can cope with, uh, with the conditions. Let's go, let's go for it. Okay, well, I found that corner. Um, we're just unburying ourselves from the snow. That was nice. Uh, might be a tad fast there. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's been a disaster so far, but um, holy, this is good. 
This track is properly icy. We are not the first to go on this track. There's been a few cars here today, quite a lot of cars actually. And uh, I may have worn off a bit too. Yeah, there we go. Um, a bit more gusto than was advisable when you're actually now no longer really on snow or even snow covered ice. We're on pure, pure, pure ice. Nice. The snow at the sides is about three feet thick. So if you go into it, you know about it. Yeah, we're now, we're on under snow again. <laughs> that was very good fun. Um, not my most impressive driving ever. Lap two. Um, the plan on this lap is to not drive off the track into massive snowbanks three times in a row. <laughs> so let's see if I can make a slightly better job of this. Okay, yes, look at that. Trick is to brake early and not oversteer, he says. Go on. It's getting pretty icy out here now. That was just pure sideways motion. But that's good, that was nice, a little bit of drift. I never thought I'd be able to drift, turns out you can, as long as you drive it on pure ice. Oh, that's, nice. that's almost, oh, go on, go on, go on, yes. So far, so good. We're almost at the end, and so far, I haven't plunged us into snowdrift just yet. Oh, yes! Still got it. He actually, the tracks, the grip on this thing is extraordinary. I'm basically drifting around some of the corners, it's pure ice, and yet it's stopping and powering on and getting out of those corners just when I wanted to. I'm surprised on these sort of, sort of roads, well, lake surfaces, we're managing. To drive as well as we are. Whew, that was pretty cool. That was good. I like that. I like that a lot. What a day. That was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. And conditions don't get much more wintry than those out there today. But let's be honest, you're not gonna be sliding your car down a slalom course on a frozen lake near the Arctic Circle on your daily commute to work. I get that, neither do I. The point is, if these cars can still perform well can handle well and are safe in conditions like that. They're going to be safe in the conditions that you and I face during winter time. And the key thing there is, if they're safe and they can perform in winter, then they can do that all year round. Thanks to all our Patreon supporters, without whom episodes like this could not be possible. If you want to help, check the description below for a link to our Patreon page. Apart from that, as ever, if you have been, thanks for watching.